Hey friends, happy new year. Um, it has been forever since I've done a video, but even though we're like well into January, I thought it would be fun to recap my 2022 make nine ish, uh, before moving into like plans for this year. So I know it's been forever. Um, I almost forget how to do this. <laughs> um, yeah, without going into like all of the details, um, I think my last video is like September, maybe October. Um, and yeah, this fall was really crazy. Um, there was a lot of illness, which was not so fun. Um, a lot of travel, which was fun, even though there was illness like with the travel, that was less great, but I got to spend um, the holidays in the States with my folks and with friends, and it was fantastic. Um, and then there was a lot of work stuff, so, which is why, like, things are different here, you may have noticed. Um, basically, I've been doing a lot more filming for work, um, for Minerva, and a bit more for Forget Me Not, so basically decided that this like attic space needed to be needed to kind of become like a permanent or like more permanent film space, which like has its uh, pros and cons, I guess, for like YouTube and for what like I do on here. Um, a pro is that like it's just set up. I should just be able to hopefully make more videos and be a bit more consistent because there won't be so much like set up and like moving this big table around, which it is a huge heavy table. Um, so like I should just be able to like pop in here and film when I want to film. Um, but the like, what I think is a bummer is that I don't get to have like my rack behind me where I had like the clothes and then I could like try them on as I talked about the make. Um, that was something that like felt really important to me, but I'm going to try without and just to like pop in pictures and see what, I don't know, like see how it goes. Um, but yeah, that's why the space is different or looking different, but yeah. So I wanted to share my 2022 make nine. It's a little bit interesting. Um, and then maybe some like, I don't know, general thoughts and reflections. Um, I usually like to do, I really like the new year, um, as a time for, yeah, some like self-assessment and some reflections, but yeah, we're like <laughs> mid January. So maybe like y'all are over it and I understand. Um, but I'm still going to do that, uh, even though I'm very like late getting started. Um, again, mostly because like we were traveling, we didn't get back here until after the new year. So my like whole new year's -ness is like, yeah, a bit behind, but I still wanted to, uh, come on and share my thoughts a bit. So I was laughing about my make nine because I have nine garments to show you that are more or less like related <laughs> to my original make nine. Um, so I can link that video if you like want to go back to last year and watch that. I not only picked nine patterns, I also picked nine fabrics to go with them. So it was really like the full like make nine project, the pattern and the fabric. I did not stick to any of that. <laughs> um, there's, I think there's one where I used the same, the actual like pattern and fabric that I had planned and everything else definitely got like a bit mixed up. So I'm counting in my nine <laughs> that I have right here. I'm counting it if I used either the pattern or the fabric. But again, there was only one where I actually like stuck to my plan. But I still thought it would be fun to share. Um, I made of the original patterns, one, two, three, four, five out of the nine. Um, 
basically I determined, okay, the Sadie jumpsuit, I still definitely want to make at some point. I have like four or five fabrics in my stash, like earmarked as like, oh, that would be such a great Zadie. Um, I just like didn't get around to it. I don't have like a, a good reason for it. I do know it's something that I want to twall and like maybe that kind of put me off a little bit, but I have the pattern, I have the fabrics, but I just like haven't even got started. So hopefully I will do that at some point, but you know, yeah, that's that one. Um, I crossed off the, oh wait, and the Effie dress from Michelle Sews. I must've got my count wrong because that was on there also. I decided I didn't want to sew that one because I think that shirt dresses just might not be my thing. Like, I just don't think that I really, I don't really like collars and I'm a bit concerned about the fitting like through the shoulders, like for on a woven. So that one just kind of got crossed off my list, unfortunately, as well as the same thing for the pussy bow blouse. I was like, I just don't think that I don't really like collars right now. Um, or I do like them, but they're not like where I'm feeling like going with my style, I guess. Um, plus yeah, just like fitting blouse sleeves feels a bit daunting for like where my time constraints are with sewing. So yeah, those two got the chopping block. Um, and then what was the other one that I did not sew? I could have like written this stuff down beforehand, but I didn't obviously, but I can show you the stuff that I did do. So let's start with that. <laughs> So I got up to nine, like nine ish in my make nine because I made multiples. So to start off, these are my three Seamwork Ace tops. And my lesson here is that like, maybe I should like wear something and try it out before I make another one immediately because I'm not actually super happy with the fit. Um, but I got really caught up in, it's a really fun sew. And so then I started like batch sewing. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is the first one and it's just in a like marled, um, cotton Jersey. Um, so it's like, it's mostly cream, but there's kind of like little fleckies of, pink and gray in it, which I really like that texture. I have a little handmade Kylie and the machine label in it. Also a hair gross. Um, yeah, so I really, I really love the like funnel neck, um, of this. That's kind of the main feature of the ACE top. What I don't like so much about it is that the shoulder is like slightly dropped. And then the waistline doesn't quite hit me where I wish it did. Um, so it definitely, it's supposed to be more fitted. Um, and yeah, kind of like very hourglassy, except that where the waistline dips in doesn't actually hit me at my waist. It hits me like right here. I know this would be so much easier to show you if I was just put, if I just put it on, but yeah, you'll have to just imagine with me that it kind of like juts out a little bit more than I would like. So I made this one and I was like, Oh, well, I'll just grade down the hips of the next one. So that is this one here. And I'm just like going to toss this aside. <laughs> Very like unpolished for y'all today. Um, so that's, so this is my second one where I did grade down the hips to a size 16, maybe even a size 14. Um, I should have said that I made the original one as an 18 in the curvy range, um, in Seamworks curvy range. It is an older pattern. So the curvy range is smaller. Like it starts at size 18. Whereas I think the current ones start at size 12. 
Um, so there's a lot more like flexibility there. But yeah, so I made this one. I took in the hips. Uh, I love this fabric. It's kind of like a like a, maybe like a light mocha, like a biscuit color um, stripe with the cream. I like it. I feel very cool uh, in this. But again, the like drop shoulder plus like not quite having enough room in the torso, enough length in the torso, I should say. It's fine. And I can like if I tuck it into something high-waisted, it looks really cute, but just wearing it with jeans like looks a little bit funny. But I have been wearing it a lot with um, my black puffer vest that I got when I was in the States, um, which is really great for wearing around the house because we're trying to like not turn on the heat so much. Um, yeah, trying to like conserve energy. So I've been wearing like my puffer vest around the house all the time. And um, both of these are really great for that. So these are like the regular ace T. And then I made another one, but this one, oh, sorry, that's probably really loud, like on the table. For this one, I made it into a bodysuit. So I combined the ace neckline so where it just it's just one line from the shoulder like all the way up through here um, I combine it with the Orlando bodysuit also by Seamwork and I really really like how it turned out but again I didn't like I just like have it in my head somehow that I'm one size and that I don't need to grade and that's just not true <laughs> like so this was quite a lesson that I really need to grade down in the hips. I'm like, at least in seam work sizing, I'm like a 16, even a 14 at the hip. And then like waist and up, I'm an 18. So the <laughs> I will absolutely not model it for you <laughs> because it's hilarious. Um, but the bum on this bodysuit is does not fit me at all. <laughs> and there's like a lot of extra fabric. So, um, yeah, I kind of have to be careful with what I wear this with. I cannot wear it with jeans because yeah, there's just like too much extra fabric in the bum. And I'm not really sure <laughs> how I would go about like fixing that. So I think I'm just not, um, but it does look really cute with uh, like a fit and flare skirt, um, something that has some like volume uh, <laughs> already. So that's really great. Um, I do really like this. Um, I do want to make an Orlando tee moving forward because I really like how, um, how form fitting it is. It really like fits. Yeah, again, because it doesn't, it follows my curves, but not in the way <laughs> that the ace does. Like I'm, I can't really explain the difference very well, but I really like the Orlando. I don't really love the ace, but I do love this. Um, yeah, this funnel neck. So this mashup worked really, really well, except for being way too big, except for having a saggy butt. But yeah, so that is my little trio of ace tops that Kind of have mixed feelings about, but, oh, I think I touched my mic. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I kind of have mixed feelings about them, but they are going to get wear like from my wardrobe. Um, and they do like add something and it did like inspire me that I do want more like either funnel or mock neck tees. Um, so I'm going to look at like some other patterns for that. So good lessons. Definitely need to like slow down a little bit. Um, I definitely got very enthusiastic about the ace top and um, yeah, need to figure out how to make them work. Okay, so this next one is like a bit of a stretch because um, this pattern was not on my Make 9 at all. It did, I think it was released like in June, um, but the fabric, this like ochre, viscose um, was on my make nine to do a Reynolds dress in. And I did end up making the Reynolds dress. Oh, goodness. Um, 
but yeah, obviously not in this fabric. This was my toile of the seamwork, very seamwork heavy um, year it's been, but this is the seamwork Meg, um, which ended up being my favorite pattern of the year. I did a video, I think the last video that I posted was like my four Meg dresses. Uh, that's, I think the most I've made of any pattern. I don't think I've ever made five of anything yet. Uh, but I do want to make, I do want a fifth Meg dress. Um, so this was my first one. I made a straight size 18 and realized that that is a bit too big for me. Um, so in my next ones, I sized down to a 16, added a little length in the bust area. But yeah, I do really love it. And I wore this so, so much in the summertime. Yeah, I love the color. Um, I love how like it has, I think this was the, I don't remember if this is the regular sleeve or this was the bonus sleeve. I think the regular one is like a flutter sleeve, but yeah, it's like a little like kind of peasanty situation with elastic and a little poof. I love this dress so, so much. I think it's one of like my most worn makes of the summer, even though I made it like toward the end of the summer, that's how much I wore it. Um, so definitely a success. And yeah, like I said, the pattern became my ultimate favorite pattern this year. So I really love this one, even though it wasn't like quite on my make nine, I had to share it. So this next one um, is really like a wearable toile. So I originally had planned to make the Dulcie Pinafore in, I have this like, actually it's really similar color to this. It's like a pumpkin-y uh, stretch cotton twill. And that was like the ultimate goal. And I didn't make it past the twill. So I did finish it. Um, this is my second twill of the Dulcie Pinafore. And I just, I'm not sure. I had it like built up in my head for so long that like I was gonna love it. And I don't know that I do. Um, part of it is the fit. I This is, like I said, my second twall. Um, I made, for me, really big progress in the fitting, um, but it's still not great. And I just don't know that I wanna like keep pursuing it. Um, yeah, basically I needed to add some length here. Um, uh, the bust point was really high, but also the underarm was feeling really high on me. So I added, I think an inch just to the front and that helped that issue. But then I didn't realize that like, if you add an inch of length in one place, you should probably take it out. Um, like where it comes up otherwise. So I have like, basically it is now too long um, in the bodice at the front. And so I get like some weird drag lines um, like around the front waist. So that's totally on me. But yeah, again, I just don't know if I actually like the shape and the style enough to keep reworking it, if that makes sense. Um, I think I've worn this like once or twice since, um, since I made it and it was like, I felt okay. The other thing is that I have like a lot of gapping, gapping, gaping. Um, yeah, at the front, sorry, I keep touching that mic. Um, yeah, right here. I just felt like every time I like moved that it just like was falling open, which I was wearing it as a pinafore. So I wasn't in concern of like losing my modesty or something, but, um, yeah, I just like, I think I built it up too much in my head. I had like all these expectations of what a like amazing wardrobe staple it was going to be for me and like how I could build all of these outfits around it. And in the end, like, I don't know, this one is the only one where I used the actual like pattern and fabric that I initially planned. 
back in January. So this is my little Maeve skirt in a chambray. And I like it. I like it. I didn't reach for it as much as I thought I would. I made it back in, hello. My kitty just came in the room, so she might, uh, hello. Wanna say hello? Hi. Okay, you can be done now. Do you wanna hang out here? She might hang out with us. Um, she doesn't really like to be scooped, but she does really like to be wherever we are. So, if I can stay on task now, um, I think I made this in April, maybe in May. So I had like the whole summer to reach for it. And I feel like I just didn't reach for it as much as I thought that I would. Um, and yeah, I don't really, I'm not really sure why, because I do really like it. It goes with a lot of things. Um, I think I ended up really reaching... <laughs> goodness kitty. Um, I ended up reaching a lot for my, um, elastic Ella skirt, uh, from forget me not. That is also like a mini, mini length, um, like gathered ruffle situation, like shape wise, it's pretty similar but I think it just fits me a little bit better. It also has kind of like a little high low effect that I really like. Um, so I think that might be why this one didn't get so much wear, but, um, yeah, it, it is still really cute and I will, yeah, I mean, it's like tucked away right now cause I definitely won't wear this in the winter, but, um, yeah, come spring or so we'll see if it, makes an appearance or maybe it will just like find a new home. So I was really excited to try out the Adrian blouse from um, Friday Pattern Company. And I made two of them. And I have to say, I don't, I don't know. I don't know that it might be me. Um, but yeah, I don't think I get the the hype. Um, so this is the first one I made. I made it back in March and this one's on me. Like a lot of it just kind of went wrong. Um, my fabric was like a little too stiff. Um, it's a cotton Jersey and I know people have made them with cotton Jersey before, but this one is just like, mm. it's thin, but like it has a lot of body, I guess. Um, so that was like problem number one. Problem number two is that I made a size too big for me. Gosh, and this fabric also like really hangs on to cat hair. Goodness. Um, yeah, so I made it a size too big. So the neckline like falls open. It's really gapy. Not great. Um, but yeah, I mean that happens like I just made the wrong size. And I contemplated, like, do I take it apart and, like, size it down um, to try to fix it? But ultimately, I think that the, it's just the wrong fabric choice. Um, yeah, so probably not going to do anything with this one. It's a bummer, but, you know, lesson, lesson learned. So then I sized down, and I did use the right fabric. Um, this is, like, a drapier. Um, it's a cotton bamboo elastic mix. Um, I guess I should say a bamboo cotton because it's mostly, I think it's close to 70% like in that viscose Jersey range. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know. Um, again, it still turned out too big for me, even though I sized down and like was much more in line with my measurements. I think this one was just a fluke and like I didn't measure before. So that's totally on me. This one I made right. And I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sounding very positive <laughs> through this make nine process, um, which I'll talk about at the end. Um, but yeah, I wanted so much to love it, but I just don't. Um, I think 
I want to take it in a bit. The, the shoulders and the neckline on this one do fit me, um, but the waistline is flows pretty far away from my body and it is supposed to be um, fairly, fairly fitted. So I'm considering whether or not I'll get around to that or if maybe this one will just like find a new home. We'll see. I'm gonna evaluate. I'm gonna wait and evaluate it um, in the spring, because right now it's like too cold for me. Anyways, um, the big sleeves like don't really fit, you know, under like a cardigan. Um, yeah. But the other thing that I just like didn't love about the pattern is that I would have. It is a beginner pattern, and this is the most like beginner friendly way to do an elastic channel. I get that but I would have preferred a facing for the elastic and the neckband rather than, um, yeah. I mean this, you can definitely see because I used not the most matching serger thread, but yeah, the like front top, like the top of the neckband and the shoulder, they just like come together rather than being like neatly tucked in. So I didn't love that aspect of the construction. But other than that, it was like a fun, really quick sew. Um, but yeah, I just don't know if I'm on the like Adrian blouse hype. Last one. Thank you for sticking around. Um, this is the Helen's Closet Reynolds dress. And I made it in a stonewashed linen that I got from Minerva. And I really love this dress. Um, of the make nine, I was looking at like the pile that I swashed over here. Um, yeah, the Meg dress, clear favorite, um, but this one is a really close second. So I made this back in April or May. I will say it's kind of like a tough one to wear because I underestimated how heavy this linen is. It is like very, very thick. Um, so at the time of the year where I'm wanting to wear like a tank top dress, it's a bit heavy. Um, and this is obviously like the maxi length. It's a lot of material, a lot of very heavy material on the body. So I may like where the split is, I may just like chop it uh, next summer um, so that it's just like, I mean, it will still be heavy, but it won't be quite so much fabric. The fabric is gorgeous. I really, really love the texture and it was really nice to work with. I think the color is gorgeous. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with like the end result. It was a pain in the bum. Um, I've heard from other people that have made the Reynolds dress that the, I'm, I'm holding on to it, but maybe you can't see like the side right here. Um, it seems like after the bus start, it just like flares out. And I thought it was just me. I thought it was like my weird, well, it's not weird. I often have trouble with like the high bust area of things. So I wondered if it was just my problem, but then I heard like a lot of other folks um, having struggles with this part of this particular pattern. So I did unpick it all. Like I had top stitched the facing down. Um, I unpicked like all of it, the understitching, and I did go in and take out like a pretty significant wedge. And I'm really happy that I did because it fits so, so much better now. And like, it is kind of, it was a pain. It was a pain to undo all of that, but totally worth it. I really, really love it. And again, I think I might need to make it a little mod, um, just by chopping the length a bit. I'm not quite sure what I'll do with the slits. If I want to chop like before, like above or below. Um, but yeah, that is a question I will leave for next like spring, summer, but 
I really love it and I do really like the pattern and I think I will make, now that I have like that fist, fist fit adjustment made, um, I think I will make more this summer. I really like, I think I want like a lightweight cotton or viscose one, something that is just like easy, breezy, super light and cool. Um, so yeah, I love the thick straps. I really like the like high square neckline, I think really suits me. So have, it's, it's been a journey. It's been a journey, but I do really like this one. I really like the pattern. So I'm going to keep that in mind for this year and the following summer. So I feel like I might've been kind of like a Debbie Downer about my make nine this year. Um, but I still wanted to share it because I feel like I learned a lot. Um, you know, looking at, and some of the practical skills, like I learned a lot about fitting during my two twalls of the Dulce Pinafore. Um, I learned a lot about my creative habits with uh, the three ace tops that I made and the, the four Meg dresses that I made, like kind of right in the same time, actually. Um, this fall, I had like a, just kind of a sprint of like, I wanted to make the same patterns over and over. Um, and yeah, how like that really worked out on the Meg dress. And I like, I really love all four of my versions and each version like got better and better. Whereas like my ace tops, I don't know. I could have used some more paws. That, that's the lesson there. Like I should have kind of seen how they worked in my wardrobe before making more of them. But yeah, I think I like, I learned a lot, um, you know, with, with each project. And then I think I also learned a lot about how my sewing practice works and, I think I put like a lot of unnecessary pressure on myself because of this make nine. Hello. <laughs> and what I decided for myself this year. And while I really, goodness, cat, while I really love sewing plans, it definitely made me see how there's a lot of people that like don't want to do make nines. And that is so, so valid. Um, I think yeah, I, as much as I love sewing plans, I definitely can see how it puts a lot of pressure, unnecessary pressure on ourselves. And then I think I took that even a step further with giving myself projects that I knew I would have to twall, which is not my favorite process. I don't really like fitting as much as I would like to expand the skill. I know the reality is that I have a small amount of sewing time and I really like a quick fix. I really like the sense of accomplishment of finishing something and then being able to wear it. So kind of giving myself this like assignment of a bunch of projects that I knew I would need to do multiple versions of was really like not the best thing for me that really like up to the stakes in a way that just like wasn't necessary. Um, and definitely like did stress me out during the year. Um, so I was like, do I want to make a make nine for 2023? And ultimately, yes, like I can't resist. <laughs> I, lo I love sewing plans. I feel like that's, yeah, it's like my most favorite part of the creative process, um, for sewing. And I like setting goals and I really like being able to meet those goals. So I want to be more realistic this year. Um, and I want to set myself up for things that are going to be a bit more manageable. Um, so I'm thinking like several knit projects probably. 
Um, I'm thinking patterns that I've already made before and like have already worked out the kinks or that I know fit my shape like relatively well. Um, so those are the things that I'm like kind of taking with me um, into make nine for 2023. But yeah, I still wanted to, I don't know, I guess I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely feeling like a Debbie Downer. Um, I think I do like hold some disappointment around only doing five out of the nine that I set up for myself, but I really need to just like let that go. It's fine. I made a lot of really good things last year. Um, and more importantly, I learned a lot in the process. I gained new skills. I learned most importantly, like I learned about me. That's the whole point for, for me. That is a big part of why I sew and why having a creative hobby is important to me is that it helps me learn about myself. So in that regard, I'm very happy about 2022 and my sewing practice. And I also know that I need to like chill out a bit in 2023 and like let go of my plans a little bit more. And yeah, I want to just kind of embrace where my creativity takes me this year. So yeah, I think that's where I'm going to stop because I've been talking for a long time and thank you for bearing with my ramblings. Um, yeah. Um, again, hopefully I will be making videos a little more consistently, maybe even like a little bit shorter. Wouldn't that be a thing? Um, so yeah, thanks for sticking around and, uh, hopefully we'll see more of each other very soon. So yeah, till next time, happy making. I'll see you soon. Bye.